All right, so since I started streaming and doing my recon Sundays, a lot of hackers have been asking me how to set up their own box in the cloud using DigitalOcean or Linode or whatever um, service provider you want to use. So I wanted to make a video and explain kind of how I've set up my Ubuntu through Windows and how I have structured my folders, my tools, and where I gather all my data. So let's get into it. Let's talk about how to set up your Ubuntu box for pen testing and bug bounty hunting. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go over to twitch.com slash nahamsek where I have my streams hosted. You want to scroll down all the way to the bottom where it says Digital Ocean. There's a link for a $50 voucher. So the way it works is if you sign up using that link, you get 50 bucks for free from DigiOcean and I get $25 for referring you. So if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to. If you already have your own account, don't worry about it. Use whatever you're more comfortable with. But I want to bring that up and make sure I save you a couple of bucks. So now that we have all this set up, we're going to go to DigitalOcean, set up our account. And once the account is set up, you want to create a new box. Okay, so once you have logged into your DigitalOcean account, the first thing you want to do is you want to click on Create. Go to Droplets. And this will bring up all the different options you have when it comes down to creating your own box. So I usually like to use Ubuntu. You can use anything else you want, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to stick to Ubuntu. Then you want to look at the plan that suits your work the best. I typically do the $40 box just because it gives me enough resources and enough space to do all the things I want to do, but you don't have to use this one particularly. You can also use the cheaper ones to get you started. And then once you are more comfortable with your work, you can start to scale it up as much as you want. So for this video, I'll take this one, which gives us three gigs of RAM, one CPU, and 60 gigs of SSD disk with three terabyte of transfer. So now that we have this selected, we wanna go down. You want to create a region that is closer to you. Um, this doesn't really make a difference, but I like it to be closer to me. Since I'm in the Bay Area, I'm gonna click San Francisco, but if you're somewhere in the world that you wanna do different, you can do that as well. These options are all additional options that you don't really need for this. So we can skip doing all of this. And once you're here and you click on create droplet, it will take a few minutes for it to set up the whole thing. And it will then give you an IP address and it will email you a password where you can log into your box. All right, so now that the box is created, we can go in here and kind of see everything that is happening. And we have different options. I'm not going to touch any of this. I want to just focus on how to set up this box as a pen tester or a bug bounty hunter. So we're going to copy this IP address. And when it comes down to using Windows and going through an SSH to connect to your box, you have different options. The first one that I personally like to use is the preview uh, terminal that comes with Windows, which kind of looks like this. But this also does rely on you having the Windows sub system set up. So if you're not familiar with Windows, this is how it works. I will leave this link also in the description. But what you can do is you can go to the Windows app or the Windows Store or Microsoft Store app. And once you have gone to the Microsoft Store, all you have to do is look for Ubuntu or whatever distro you want to use. And all you have to do is go here and click install and it will set it up for you. So you can see I've already set this up. You can do this on your own easily by just going through it and just clicking install, for example, or get. And this will install Ubuntu 16 and it should be done pretty quickly. But I'm going to skip this since I've already done it. Um, you can use this by just looking up Ubuntu in your search. And that will bring up this terminal that also allows you to do the same things as any other terminals that I've shown so far. If you don't like any of these following options, your other option that you have is using something like Putty. We can download it from this website and I'll also leave the link down below in the description. But this will allow you to also do the same thing. It's just a little bit older and it doesn't look as good as I want it to when I'm doing my work and it doesn't feel the way I wanted it to. So the, the best one that I've tried so far has been the uh, Microsoft Terminal Preview that uh, hasn't been fully released. So yeah, you can do any of those and you can just log into these boxes by tapping in SSH, root at the IP address that they've given you. And uh, if you have chosen the password option, then you would get an email in your email address that you have provided on your account when you signed up, which has the root password for this box. 
So once you've gotten your password for your box, all you have to do is SSH in, type in your password, provide a new password. And this will get you to your box where we can start doing things. The one thing that I recommend everyone doing the first time when they log in is to create a new user to kind of avoid logging in as rude and only using sudo when you need to. So you create a new user by typing in the command add user and giving it a username. For this one, I'm gonna put in a homsec. And then it's going to ask you for a password. So I'm going to type an easy password for this video. And it's going to ask you a bunch of information. You don't have to fill this out. You can just press enter and go all the way through. So now we have a new user called Nahamsek. But in order for this to work, we want to make sure that this user is added to the pseudo group. And we want to do that to make sure we have access to doing the same stuff that as a root user does in case we are doing something that requires a higher privilege. And you add that to the pseudo group by adding user mod ag giving it sudo and then typing in the user for the username we just created so now if we want to log in as this user we can go back and log in and check what we were doing so now i'm going to create a new terminal i'm going to do ssh nahamsek at and put in this username and i'm going to type in my password and this should put me in as well, let's try it again. This should put me in as Nahamsek at the automation box. But the only difference is when I want to look at files that requires root access, I would have to type in sudo and then my command. And that would require me to type in my password versus if I don't want to run it with root privileges, then I can just type in ls and it would run that command with the current user. So enough with all of that. Now we want to set up our environment to a point where we are comfortable and we have all the tools that we need. All right, so to speed things up, I'm going to use my Bug Bounty Hunter tools that I've created a couple months ago and kind of use this as a baseline to install all the tools that we may need. So the first thing you want to do is you want to clone this repository by typing in get clone. And this would create a folder for it under whatever folder you're in. And the next thing you want to do is you want to go to that folder and make sure that the install file has the proper permissions. And then for this to properly work, you want to make sure you run this as sudo because some of these tools require root privileges in order for them to get installed using APT or any other resources that we're going to use. So I'm going to let this install for now. And the good part about this is that it actually does install Go and all the Go tools that we need, but it may take a few moments. So I'm going to speed this up and let it do its thing. All right, so it looks like everything has been set up. We're just going to do another LS to get the same result as the ones shown here in our tools folder. So now we can see that we have a majority of the tools that we want to use within our recon or whatever else we're doing. And this is a great baseline of the things that you may need moving forward. Okay, so we have all these great tools and it's awesome to have these different tools, but every time we want to run any of them, we have to type in every single command, every single argument, and it takes time. It takes a lot of time to type in every single one of those. What I want to do next is I want to show how to make bash aliases. So all you have to do is type in the command name and give it the target and it does everything else for you. So you don't have to type in every single argument every time you want to use these tools. So let's see how this works. First one that I usually do is directory search, just because every time I find a new host, automatically I run directory brute forcing on it, just to make sure I find all the juicy files and folders. But in order for us to create the right alias, we want to use this tool like we would normally. So I'm gonna type in the command as I would use it normally on a regular target, and then implement that into an alias. So what this is doing right now is creating the dash u argument for the URL, t for the number of threads, and e for extension, which I'm giving it HTML. And if we run this, it's going to look for different files on hacker1.com. So it looks like it works properly the way we want it to. Now let's create this into an alias within our bash 
alias file. So we do this by going to our root folder for that user. And then we're going to open up our bash profile. As you can see, there's already a few different outputs already in here based on the BBHT that we created. And it should have directory search in here already. And if it doesn't, we can add it by going all the way at the bottom or all the way at the top and typing in our earth search and whatever you want to call it. it doesn't have to be this i like to call my aliases the same as the tool that it's using and we're going to paste our command in there but we want to make sure we change this so right now if i would type in directory search or dir search in my terminal it would always and always run this exact command on hacker one so we want to replace hacker one with a user input and we do that by replacing it with a dollar sign one and we also want to make sure the extension we're giving it is also adjustable so right now what it will look for is it's going to look for their search url and the extension so let's try this out once we have created it we're going to source it to make sure all these changes are in effect then i'm going to type in directory search yahoo.com and give it the extension json and the problem with that is right now is that we haven't defined where directory search exists. So we want to make sure we go back and actually adjust it to exactly where this file exists. And again, we want to make sure we go up and we actually source this file to put all the changes in effect. And we're going to run this one more time on this time. We're going to use hacker one. and typos are real. And as you can see by just typing in directory search, the number of threads are there, the JSON extension is there, and our target is hacker one. So we can do this with all of our tools, but as you can see, I've already done this with BBHD, where it actually pulls all the commands that I have put inside of my repository named Recon Profile. So all these different ones are in here. They're pretty outdated. You can always create your own. But the point of this repository was to help other hackers understand what things they can automate in order to become more efficient. Now, let's say that you have a bash alias like cert.sh where you know you are going to be using it in different contexts and also build up on top of it in different scripts. So I have created this alias called cert.sh. I give it corp.yahoo.com and it obviously returns all the subdomains of yahoo.com using cert.sh. But unfortunately, you can't call this command directly if you're writing its own script. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say we have a script called script.sh and the purpose of this is to call cert.sh, get the, you know, the user's input and based on that domain name, it was going to run cert.sh. And then after that is done, it's going to do a couple more things like echo test and then echo done, for example. So you want to be able to use that alias directly without having to type in the entire command like the one below. So what you're going to do is when you run this command, you're going to see that it's actually not going to recognize the cert.sh because of the fact that cert.sh is not actually a command and it's an alias. So we can actually make this into its own command by moving the content of that alias into a command. So we'll do this by going to using, using sudo, typing in nano to open up the file and creating a new file in our bin folder called sort.sh. This is going to require a password because you are using sudo and we're going to put that exact same command back into here as well. So what this does is it hits sort.sh, uses your input, puts a domain there, gets the JSON input or the JSON output, I should say, uses JQ to clean it up and get the name value where every subdomain is stored and then it feeds it to set to clean it up and get rid of all those characters that we don't want in there. In this case, it's a star for a wildcard. And then use a sort U to make sure we're only getting unique input or output. So now that we have created this, we want to make sure that it has the right permissions.
And now we want to make sure that it's completely removed from our bash profile. So now that we have all done this, we can go back and type in our earlier tool that we created called script and we can call yahoo.com, which this time it's not going to give us an error because it actually recognizes cert sh as a command instead of an alias. So now you can build up on top of this and do other things like feed it into different tools, write different functions that relies on this thing. But I want to make sure I demo the difference between a command and an alias and how you can use them in different contexts. I personally make every single tool that is being built up on top of, like directory search or search.sh into its own command, and things that I'm only going to use once in a while that I won't build up on top of it as an alias. So we covered how to install particular tools, how to create an alias, and when to create an alias versus a command. But now I want to talk about file and folder structure. What I mean is I want to talk about how I output all these different files into its own folder and how I always keep track of my data when I run a bunch of scans. And obviously we can do that by creating a dedicated folder to all of the data that is, for example, dedicated to recon. So I made a recon folder and within the recon folder, I'm going to actually create another folder for my target. So if I'm hacking on yahoo.com, I'm going to have a folder within recon for yahoo.com as well. So now if we go to recon slash yahoo.com, we can run commands like cert.sh on the corporate domain and have it actually output all of these files into a text file within this folder. So as you can see right now, it's going to go through all that data and now it's going to save it within yahoo.com. You can do this as however you fit. You can make a folder for that date and make sure everything is sorted by date. You can make it based on the output of the tool. But the point is to kind of show you how I am actually taking care of my folders and how I store my data. This way, if I ever wanted to look at historic data, I also have the dates attached to them and I also know exactly what target to look for. So for example, if I'm looking for Yahoo, I can directly go to recon slash yahoo.com and this way I can see all the files and folders that I have created for this particular target. So now that we have our file and folder structure ready, let's say we wanted to create a tool that performs curl on every single domain that exists in our cert.sh search and then also does some directory brute forcing. So let's create that together really quickly. So we'll call it auto.sh. And within auto.sh, we're going to create a folder that says for every domain that it finds in this command, which relies on our input again, whatever target we give it, we want to do some stuff. So just to make the basics of it work, we're going to call this to have an echo and just tell us every single domain that comes up in cert.sh. And we'll build on top of that right after this. So let's make sure this has the proper permissions, we run it. So it doesn't work because we didn't give it an argument. So now we're going to give it hacker1.com because it relies on us to provide it a domain. So this is all the list that we got. So now that I know my automation is working and the script is actually working, I want to make sure I save the output of this tool into the appropriate folder. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a target folder within my recon original folder that we created. We're going to call it hacker1.com. And then I'm going to go into my auto file and I'm going to tell it to actually list all of these within the directory that we just created. So we're going to tell it to save all of these within here and we can also just add a hard coded date or whatever that is. So we could actually say 11.11.2019.txt. So what this will do is it would echo out all of these files from this, uh, all these domains from this command and it's going to put them all into recon hacker one and then whatever the domain name is and give it today's date. So let's try this out really quickly. And if we do a hacker one LS, we can see that our file is also created here. So it kind of helps us organize all these things. And we can take it a step further and create maybe a folder called curl output. So we're gonna do hacker one.com curl out. And then go in here and make sure that we curl every single domain and we actually write them to uh, the domain name. So we're going to put that into recon, com, curl out. 
So what this does is it takes whatever domain this is right here. Whatever domain we're working on, it's going to curl it. And it's actually going to put the output of that curl into this file. So let's try it out and make let me fix this last minute adjustments. So again, what this does is it would curl the domain that we're currently working on. It would put the output of the curl command into recon hacker one curl out and it would name the file the same as the domain that we're currently working on. So let's run this really quickly. So it does a lot of curls. We we'll go to recon hacker one. So we have our curl out. And if we look at this, every single one of those domains that we originally saw at the top has has its own file with the output of the curl command. So this kind of keeps us from losing track of when we have done things, it helps us stay organized, and it also helps make sure every target has its own folder where all the data that belongs to it is being stored. You know where the targets are, you know all your data is collected within that target folder, and you don't have to start searching through all of your folders to make sure you have the output of all your tools. So as I mentioned earlier, I kind of want to make a video explaining how I set up my box and what are the tools that I use and also how I store all of my files and data within my box. Obviously, everything that I've shown were examples. and It's kind of to show you how you can do them on your own if you have the right guidance or if you see how others are doing. So again, you don't have to do everything the same way I've done them. You can install these tools in different directories. You can store your data differently. But I kind of want to show how I do things to make sure I keep everything organized and I also have good track of everything everything within my box. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually update all these tools like BBHT and Recon Profile. I'll link them down below in the description. And now what I want you to do is I want you to tell me if you like this video, if this helps, or if there's any other videos that you want me to create, or maybe a guide on how to use a particular tool, or if uh, you want, if you found this actually valuable. And last but not least, I want to make sure that you keep in touch with me. So if you don't follow me on social media, make sure you go follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Nahamsek. Every Sunday I do a live recon stream and I bring a guest where they talk about how they do recon. So if you want to check it out, go to twitch.com slash Nahamsek. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. Peace.